All right, hello. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to do a traceover of a photo in Photoshop today. Uh, so what you're first you're going to want to do is find a photo. I'm going to be using this photo of Casey Neistat. He's a uh, YouTuber. I suggest you check him out. Uh, so once you got your photo, you're going to want to open up Photoshop, uh, go into File and Open. Um, you're going to want to find the photo that you want and upload it up on here. So once it's up on here, you got your photo, make sure you click on uh, your uh, pointer over here so you don't you know, accidentally do anything stupid. Uh, then you're going to want to click down here on this. I can't remember the exact name of what it does, but basically what it does is it puts a clear layer over your photo so that uh, it makes erasing and filling in the photo with colors uh, later on easier. So just uh, click on this little piece of paper down here and it creates like a clear layer over the top of this. Um, so after that, what you're gonna wanna do is click on your paintbrush. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it's set to black because that's what I like to use to outline. Um, then after you've got that, you're gonna wanna zoom in however far you would like to zoom in and then use either your uh, use your bracket keys on your keyboard uh, it's just use your bracket keys on the keyboard and you can adjust the size or I'm pretty sure you can go here yep you can go here and you can adjust the size through here also I find it easier to use my brackets uh, on my keyboard just uh, faster and simpler uh, so once you get that to an appropriate size that you want, I'm probably going to keep it, no, that's too large, and that's too small, so let's go up to, uh, yeah, it's, it's probably good. Um, now what you're going to want to do is you're just going to simply trace every part of the person in the photo that you want to trace. Uh, so. Once that's done, I'll come back and we'll go on to the next part. So get to tracing. Okay, so once you have gotten everything traced out the way you want it, uh, then you're, you should be good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and point out that I, whenever teeth are involved in a person, uh, or in a photo with a person in it, uh, I do not outline the teeth. I find that it looks very weird when you're done with it. Uh, I don't know. just always have. I just find it very odd uh, looking. Um, I like to go into a little bit more detail and uh, trace some of the uh, trace some of the, uh, the wrinkles on shirts and stuff like that, and uh, the hair as well, uh, especially over here. I don't go into like a mega mega ultra detail, but enough to where it looks interesting whenever you're done. Um, so now what you're gonna want to do is you're going to want to go over here to the paint bucket. And if you are using a Mac, uh, you click Option, and once you hold down Option, you get the little uh, uh, dropper tool. But if you don't want to do that, or you want to make it a little bit simpler for you, I guess, I don't know, uh, it's up, up to you, uh, you go to the eyedropper tool over here, and you just click, zoom into where you want, and you just click anywhere on the surface, and it gets that color. Uh, over here and what I like to do with my photos before I fill in the color is I like to look at the colors and I like to take the colors that I'm going to be painting the, his face with from the actual original photo so now that I've got a skin tone let's see if I like it first I'm gonna wanna now that I've got the skin tone over here picked out I'm gonna wanna just click 
fill it in. See, I like that color. I like that color a lot. It'll fit. So uh, now what I do is I just go ahead and make sure I get the whole face filled in uh, with color. Sometimes it gets a little bit difficult and you might have to break out the uh, the um, uh, paintbrush again. It's selected with your color and you might have to color in a few pieces here. Uh, remember if you need to you can change the size of your paintbrush to make it easier by either clicking the bracket tools or going up to here. Mine is currently on set on two. So uh, just go ahead and make sure you get that stuff colored in. Um, let's see here. Now with the glasses, I'm gonna pay a little bit more detail because as you can see, uh, Casey's glasses have these, uh, these white edgings on it uh, and I wanna capture those in it. So we're gonna make sure I do that uh, correctly. Uh, but uh, I'll get back to you once I am done uh, filling in the face and you know everything uh, if I think of anything else I need to tell you I'll come back and tell you Okay, so once you have gotten, you know, most of see I got Casey uh, colored in the way I uh, want it to. Um, now the only problem here is is the background. Uh, to decide what color you want to put in the background, you can simply choose a color yourself. Uh, if anything you like from over here, you can just kind of flip around and let's say I wanted to choose a color sort of like this, a slight blue. You just do that, and bam, look, you got a light blue background. Uh, or you can choose a color from the actual background of the photo. So let's try this yellow. I like to do this because uh, I like to stick with using colors only from the photo. The only colors that I didn't use that weren't straight from the photo were the black and the white for Casey's teeth. Um, I don't know why, I always like to put a just a straight white tint over someone's teeth. I just like to do that. Um, but anyway, I think I'm going to stick with the yellow. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're kinda gonna wanna go touch this up real quick because uh, where I went to detail in Casey's hair, you should be able to see yellow, but you can't because it doesn't automatically fill that in. So you have to go fill that in manually. Oops, but it shouldn't take you that long, depending on how much detail you have. Uh, me, it's, I should be done with it in here in just a second. Um, oh, we have a couple little pieces over here, and I should be good. Uh, it's just you gotta pay attention to the little details. Uh, that's what really makes the photo, uh, or the traceover of the photo stand out. Um, so, let's see. Uh, yeah, here we go. I got that. It's all done. Um, what you want to do now is you're gonna want to go to a file save as uh, and you're going to want to name it so I'll name it Casey uh, Casey Trace uh, Casey AV name it Casey AV and then uh, you can you can save it as a Photoshop layer or, or just as a Photoshop uh, in Photoshop format and that will enable you to come back and pick up exactly where you left off uh, from the last time. Uh, so like if I wanted to come back and change up a few things, I could just re-upload this, right? 
or you can save it as a uh, JPEG, which is what I'm going to save it as now because I think it looks fine and I'm good with it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save it. Okay. Uh, minimize that. And here is my Casey photo right here. Uh, you can see the differences right here. I mean, I kind of did this uh, quickly, so it's not my best I've ever done. Um, but hopefully this shows you the basics on how to do it. Um, thanks for watching. I'll leave a link to Casey's channel uh, in the description. Uh, I highly suggest you check him out. Um, all right. Uh, thanks, guys. Hope this helped. Bye. Oh,